Okay, yesterday I talked about Afghanistan and the, ri the mineral riches in Afghanistan, about lithium, about cobalt, about uranium. And I speculated that what if uh, they were just taking the uranium into Iran to be secretly uh, crushed. Maybe the Krupnik crushers are in Afghanistan and then they're trucked over uh, and then the Pashtuns are the truckers and they're being managed by the Pakistan uh, ISI-111. Um, and that's been happening a long time with the drug route. So what if they just added the uranium to the drug route? Or what if the uranium and the drug route has been the same the whole time for the whole uh, length of the Afghan war? And it's still going on. And maybe Robert Levinson, the guy who was imprisoned, the guy who um, Robin Gritz is trying to get out, has been working on this project. And I thought about Mark Lambert's two kids that are Farsi-speaking. Now his wife is Russian-speaking. She is the Krupnik. She's the Krupnik crushers. Um, you know, we've got uh, a, a Romanov a Krupnik, a Roman Krupnik crushing Mark's Krupniks uh, on the pier there where I showed all the little boats in Frederick. So he's getting his Krupniks crushed. Maybe they had Krupnik crushers uh, near one of these uh, uranium enrichment facilities. So that would make sense. That tied that all together. I didn't meet the girls, but um, um, Task Force met them, and they, they do indeed speak Farsi. So I thought, okay, great. Uh, he probably established a logistics path out of here, out of the UAE. You could process this and say it all came from UAE. Uranco could buy it, uh, the German company, and then they could deliver it to the United States as, for a backfill, for a backfill for the uh, program of megatons to megawatts. If you don't remember megatons to megawatts, it was this program here to take 20,000 Russian warheads and bring it to the United States. Why do I want to say Urenko is going to backfill? Well, I just thought about these paperclip scientists that McDuff talks about. And I thought, they would never let a nuclear weapon get out of their hands. They would control it in some way. I don't know if they'd control it in the United States, in, 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 in Clarksburg, West Virginia with Andy, uh, and, and the whole FBI. That's probably the most powerful place. But Andy also has NATO connections, so maybe he would... Uh, store this in Belgium. I, I really thought it would be shaped, the new the head, headquarters potentially, or some place that was just as secure as Clarksburg in uh, in Germany um, or Belgium, one of those two. And, and I don't I haven't really identified that yet, but I just got the feeling that no, these this didn't happen. This whole thing didn't happen. This went from uh, these warheads went to Germany in NATO in some fashion, and I can't figure out why. And then you could backfill with the UAE. So then the the one two three discussion started to make more sense. If you look at the map, the one two three discussions start making a lot more sense because you need to have a cover. This stuff needs to actually be coming from the UAE. You need other things to ship, like cars or whatever, or armaments, or you got to have something, some reason other than uranium, which is illegal. But Hillary's in control of all this, right? And I think she's been in control of it since 1998, since the program started. And I think it started with Hillary and Madeleine Albright when Hillary was a shadow secretary of state. So I think it's been going on a long time. Um, and the real comeuppance here, uh, and negotiated on the Blackberries from the whole time, uh, the real comeuppance, though, is as we're getting close to the end of Obama's uh, reign or whatever, uh, they need to get this deal done. So they have to get it done quickly. So a lot of stuff happens right at the end of 2016 with bribes and stuff that are kind of clumsy. So moving on, um, I did follow up. Oops, sorry. I did follow up with where the shipments actually were coming in. Sorry about that. That's who Centris is. Um, okay, so I followed up on where it's coming in. It actually was coming into the port of Baltimore on its way to the facility in Paducah, Kentucky. Um, but it used to go to Piketown, Ohio. So I thought, you know, there has to be some kind of FBI in, in Columbus uh, because that's where Pettijohn, I met Pettijohn, I went and looked at his background, I thought he was from, he is from Lynchburg, Virginia, and he has all this nuclear, 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 NNSA, it says in all of his cases, NNSA, I said, what the heck is he doing in Columbus? That's the part of the story of my entrapment that I couldn't figure out. Um, well, it turns out Patel is in Columbus, and it... Um, not only is Battelle in Columbus, but it manages all the nuclear labs. It, it really ties everything together quite nicely. It, it, I knew it uh, did Brookhaven. I knew it did Idaho National Lab, where the sub uh, research, uh, power research was, the power institute was. But it also does Lawrence Livermore, and then there's BWX, that's in Lynchburg as well. Um, and uh, it d does the University of California, ties everything together there. Um, but then also it has this Utah. 
Battelle, and I immediately thought of Krupnik Crushers, and uh, then also this Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Pacific National Lab. But the one thing I didn't know um, about Battelle was they did the National Bio uh, Defense and Analysis Countermeasurement Center in, you guessed it, Frederick, Maryland, right where Mark Lambert is. And I thought, I wonder if National Bio Defense, it sounds kind of like they may have some of the uh, folks involved there, like Tanae Taggart works on, you know, as kind of a secret defense programs as far as bioweapons and so forth for the Army and Institute of Health, Agriculture and so forth, and Department of Homeland Security. Okay, so I looked at that, and Fort Detrick is indeed in Frederick, Maryland. And it is in terms of U.S. Army Research and Materiel Command, uh, which would tie very closely with Bethesda being the um, Walter Reed Army Hospital there, and then, of course, Bethesda Navy Hospital, and then Infectious Diseases is there, Cancer Institute, all the isotope usages for, for uranium being a, a, a major uh, center for uh, R&D here. Uh, and then it also does all the rating of of, of this material and Argonne Labs in Chicago as well, but all it, every Battelle really ties all things together. Then I started thinking about Dick Cheney and the Shinko Lobue mine and the and and Kamiko and taking the uh, stuff up to NATO and 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 turning it into yellow cake. And I thought, well, there's a Dick Cheney connection there with Kamiko and and all the Genie Energy folks. Uh, here's another Dick Cheney connection with Battelle. So it really, Battelle does kind of tie everything together quite nicely. Okay, and, and, and just looking at the African route here for a little bit, um, there has been, I, I watched a lot of series and so forth about the Congo um, and how they got stuff out of the Congo and how things came through Kenya and then how things went through Somalia. And I thought, oh gosh, you know, that Zambia would be a perfect place to put the croup to crushers. I won't go to the map there just on the, in, in the interest of time. But there's the last containers leaving Russia. That was kind of the size of the containers. Um, there is the UAE agreement gets signed in 2000, um, in, uh, in, I'm sorry, 2009. And that's really when Imran goes from being kind of like the organizing the car rings and stuff like that. Um, in the Operation Cassandra. Now he gets kicked up into this more logistics uh, angle, I believe. So uh, with uh, Brilliant and other kind of projects. And then you have all these cover stories, which I think are so great, Reuters. You know, we have unexpectedly high uranium reserves in Iran, etc. So uh, there's some of the tanks leaving uh, Russia in, a, a, in the interest of time. Here's what the New Brunswick Laboratory does. is They, they used to receive samples from Piketown, Ohio. They'd send there to see what the percentage of 235 to 238 was and so forth. Now they receive it from Paducah, Kentucky. And that just made so much sense that the Mark's company would be in Cincinnati, Ohio, near, the, near obviously where the uranium was going, uh, the other end of it. And then here's Argonne National Laboratory, so you have to send the samples to Argonne, so they have their control on it. And just a real quick look here at the 235 in Richmond. A um, couple of things that um, jumped out at me here was there used to be enrichment going on in uh, all these plants in the U.S., Piketown, but now it's zero, okay? Here's New Mexico, though. This is the Germans coming into, this is the paperclip scientists coming into New Mexico and building that up. And then Arriva in Idaho Falls is building a new plant, so they're bringing that up. So I'm not saying those are the paperclip Nazis there, but it, it does appear that they are the paperclip Nazis. And then the um, laser enrichment is also online to be built. So that same laser enrichment technology that was built in Delaware looks like it's going to be implemented in Paducah, Kentucky. And I think that's really to get Mitch McConnell. Now, if you notice the name here, 10X, and the tremendous amount of enrichment that's done in Russia, I think that Russia becomes the enrichment company for Urenko in Europe uh, to support that business. And um, maybe I think this is a 50-50 split. Like I said, in my first one this morning, I think Mueller got 50%. And I think the Germans got 50%. Um, that's just what it looks like to me.